welcome to Ragpit Tabletop. My name is Leonard, but you can call me Leo. After my second video, you guys left some good uh, comments on what I should improve and think about for my next and future videos. So I'll try to address that now in this video and of course in the future ones. If you have any more suggestions, please leave that in the comment. Today we'll talk about how I do when I build a tile here. In the past I actually did build just as things popped into my mind, just like we, you would uh, build with Lego bricks, just build something without any instructions and voila you have something. But today I actually do plan ahead due to uh, savings and making the most out of each kit. First step is to select a tile setup. Here you can see me go through the different tile options from the original Necromunda starter box. I have in this case chosen the intersection tile for this build. Now here's something that players do forget and thus don't like with the pre-made walls and thinks it offers a little bit too little variation. Well, according to the rules the tiles need to be connected at least with 50% to each other. This means you can create a new and interesting setup with this in mind. Using the Games Workshop 2D tiles as a reference here is a great tool for planning your Soma Taldis tiles. I strongly recommend using them and going through what options you have and how to approach it. Now I do recommend a good variation of tiles. 9 tiles is what I do recommend, but 7 tiles is also good. With this you get a good variation options for your setup. As you can see from the previous video I showed here, you can get a nice setup with the offset options that you get. With my tiles and my builds I have named them differently and you will see them here shortly. Let's start out with the empty tile. Well, it doesn't mean that it's empty, but it doesn't contain any walls. You can and I do recommend to add a theme to this tile, such as a settlement with containers. Then we have the eye shape. It's a straight wall along one of the edges here. A theme can be easily installed into the wall here, leaving a lot of space or open space for more themed items or just having a shooting range. Moving along to the most common one that I have, the L shape. The walls are now curved along the edges here, and there are two kinds of these uh, L shaped ones. Uh, one of them has a small extended wall extending into the next tile here. U shape. Well, this one is a hard to make something of when you're converting from 2D tiles into 3D tile, but it's not impossible, and I will be doing a couple of examples in the year to come here. Here's my vault tile that I based on the U shape. 2D tile. And here we have actually one that I have forgotten about, the T shape. This one I will actually attend to and uh, do one or two tiles in the coming year. And then finally we have the cross tile. This one will be the most expensive one to build when you're going from two dimensions to three dimension. And it could be quite hard to make a theme around this tile because of the limited space that you have when you put down all these walls and columns into place. And that's why I have chosen to build a cross tile in this video. Now, how many tiles of each should you get? Now, that's actually entirely up to you, but I do recommend the following. So, I will go for a cross tile or T tile. Then I will go for uh, one empty two L-shaped and two uh, I-shaped tiles as well. And the last one I would go either for another empty tile and a L-shaped one. The L-shaped one I do like because it offers a lot of options inside uh, the walls. And the walls actually provide a lot of tactical options for cutting off line of sight and such. Now if you do still remember after all my ranting here, I did select a cross tile or X tile for my build here. I have chosen this one because it requires a lot of kits to make when you are building with double wall height as I'm doing. So what I wanted to do is to cut down the kits needed for this one and share it with you how to make some savings. Again, I'm not really good at drawing schematics but it just shows you that anyone can do this and it helps with the planning. First calculations using only walls would require 4 kits of the own metallis walls and columns. Now given it would grant you a lot of extra columns and long wall sections, but it's still a very heavy investment. Now adjusting the short wall sections with optional parts. So with each walls and columns you get a sprue with doors. 
Replacing the bottom level short walls with doors cuts the kits needed by half. And that's a lot, especially if you're going to do double wall heights. Now, we still need some platforms and other items. It's not just walls we're going to use here for this build, so with the final calculations, I end up with a Dark Uprising kit. Now, this Dark Uprising box is really good for terrain creators. Costing 230 euros, that sounds like a lot at first, but let's look what's included in this box. We got Somatalis Barricades and Objectives, that's worth 30 euros. Moving on to the uh, Somatalis Platforms and Stairs, that's another 50 euros. And you do get two Somatalis Walls and Columns in this box, and that's a total of 130 euros. And then finally we have the Fermic Plasma Conduits. They're no longer available except in the Dark Uprising box, and I think it's worth around 30 euros this one as well. That's actually 240 euros worth of terrain right there. But on top of that, you actually do get other items. Additionally, you get the Enforcers and Corpse Grinder Cult Miniatures, of course. A rulebook, tokens and templates, dices and cards, all very good things to have. These extra items you could actually sell. Players who always need rule books, they need uh, dices and tokens and such. And of course the uh, models themselves you could actually sell. But they could be a little bit harder to sell all these models if you're buying multiple kits of the Dark Eye pricing here. So I actually do keep them myself because they're great for kit bashing and they have a lot of options in there. Now as I have selected the kits needed, or in this case the kit needed, I start cutting out every single bit. I do not leave anything on the sprue even if I know I won't use it. These parts that are not going to be used will be placed in a bits box later on. Now as usual this takes some time cutting out the parts and cleaning them, so usually I actually watch a series or a movie at the same time while I'm doing this. This is a normal thing I do and it actually do take some extra time if you're watching something at, during your cleaning work here, but it makes it less boring. For those of you wondering, I'm watching a series called The Tick, which is uh, on the Prime streaming service. And of course cleaning the parts here from all the mold lines and such, it does get messy if you don't collect it, so if you can, not try to collect it and throw it in a controlled manner. Once I'm done, I usually collect all the parts into two piles. One pile with the things that I will use, and the other one for parts that will be eventually reaching a bits box. I try to organize the bits so I can find them easily once I start building the tile. Gluing the walls and columns together is the next step here, and of course if you have other themed objects that needs assembly here. This helps with being able to build faster in the later stages, and I can get a general overview of everything when it gets built together. Now, not shown in this video is the part where I dry fit all the parts onto the so metallic tile. This is to check that they are 100% straight and able to fit nicely and when they are put together. I do this because the first time I built a tile I made a mistake of not cross checking. And when it was time to put them onto the tile they didn't fit. So my recommendation here is to always cross check everything you do with a so metallic terrain kit. Here you can see me adding the lower section of the walls, or rather the doors that will act as walls. And here you can see that I'm also cross-checking here now so they fit properly onto the tile and everything. And as you might notice here, I do not glue down the part onto the tile at this stage, I keep the walls separate from the tile. I have for this tile selected to use pipes to cover up the doors. Cutting the pipe into two, it will be enough to cover up two wall sections. Now, when you cut it, you can actually just cut it on the ends here, as you can see, and then just snap it off. I did notice that the pipes needed some free space under the second wall level, so I cut off the bit inside of the wall here to make the pipes fit. Assembling the walls and adding the pipes was an easy process. Now, the wall is created and we have actually created a new design for the Somatalis walls. But the doors are shorter in height compared to the normal walls. Now this you cannot see from the player point of view, but if you're picky you can add some bits to cover up this small gap. But in my case, being lazy, I do not really care about that. The second wall actually covers up from the playing point of view. 
Here, I started to decide to go down a different route from my initial approach from the schematic. This happens a lot when I do build. New ideas pop up and this is why I cut out every single piece from a sprue and pre-assemble them so I can see what I have available. But in this case here, I'm actually sticking to the schematics to some extent. I'm just moving one of the towers to be on the same side as the other tower. The reason for this is that I'm going to use this tile as an entrance for my future stronghold. And this idea came up when I was chatting with one of my patrons and good friend here, Edwin, about the upcoming campaign that we will record for this channel coming this spring next year. So thanks Edwin for screwing up my plans as usual, but nah, seriously, nothing but love for the ideas and pushing me to think outside the box about new things, so thanks. When assembling the large gate, I used four door frames and just placed two of them upside down making sure that the opening is facing the same direction so the gate can be detached. Now it's all coming together nicely. Platforms is usually an easy part of the building process. I decided to utilize the Dark Uprising box as much as I could, thus I wanted to use the platform that is pre-built with three small individual styles together. Now, with this new idea, I actually went off the initial plan just using the Dark Uprising box, so I'm sorry for that, but I do have a lot of kits and spare bits, so I'm actually going to use those parts. So, instead of using columns extending upwards, uh, creating a tower, I dove into my bits box and found some Sector Mechanicus frames. These needed some adjustment to fit onto the platform, so I had to cut off some supports here for the columns for it to fit. Once these platforms are placed, I'm done with the step that I call the basic shape, which means all the walls are placed. Now, the basic shape step is the first one when I do build my tiles. Well, apart from cleaning and cutting and all that, it is my first one. Next step in my building process is what I call the main theme step. In this case, it's the main gate to the stronghold. This step can take different amounts of time depending on the complexity of the main theme. My gate is fairly simple. Just the gate and some Sector Mechanicus railings. As you can see I'm also adding smaller railings made from ladders. I do have extra so it's time to use them. When doing railings in this way just cut off the bolts on one side and clean it off with your scraping tool. Measuring out the length of the railing can be done in many ways, and I like to visualize it and pretty much only cut where I think it looks nice. I don't measure it unless it's something that requires precision to fit. Finally, I place the railings and do some final adjustments as seen here. Also, I do not glue down the towers here, as I want to paint them separately later on. Here we can see the various parts that I have, making it easier to paint in later stages. This is something that I always do, I keep the parts separate here. Usually it is walls, tile and larger objects. Now I don't usually green stuff and I avoid it as much as possible due to my low confidence in my skills with it. But the main gate needs some attention and it has a small gap between the two doors here. Yeah. It looks like I have a nice set of tools, but trust me, they only get to see the light of day once or twice a year. Anyhow, not much green stuff is needed, so just go nuts and fill that gap. Now, this is a step that I forgot during the cleaning process. It is easier to do this at the cleaning process stage if you have planned for something like this. Cutting off these supports is needed so it can be connected with other walls that might have the same design. Also, I can add a flat wall with magnets later on in case I need to cover up the ugly inside of the door frame. On to the third step of my building process here now, and that's what I call the access detail step. What I mean with this is that each tile with so metallic walls should have multiple ways of accessing the tile. Otherwise it can be become unbalanced during gameplay. Height advantage is a thing. And if there's only one way of getting to the second level of a tile, it will prove hard for the player on the low ground. So I always go to this step directly after the main theme step to make sure that I have space for these access points. On this tile I want the access details to be on the opposite side of the main gate as I do think the stronghold will have enough ladders and lift inside the stronghold. For this tile I decided to build a ladder ramp. I need two ladders, 
two small individual tiles and one railing. First, I cut off the excess part of the tile. I do save the part that is cut off. These parts can be used for covering up small gaps and actually provide some nice details here and there. Then of course, clean the sides. And as you can see, I can freely scrape towards myself without hurting myself because I'm using this scraping tool from Games Workshop. I do recommend uh, getting one of these mold line removers because you can work very fast when you're building terrain. Next, I move on to the railing. I measure out where I want it and I have also decided it should be a corner railing. Luckily I can use just one railing for this build here. This is done by cutting it as shown and placing them together as will be shown here soon enough. As usual, clean the parts that you have cut. Now, it will look weird with the railings that is cut and has no support pole to it. But no worries, these parts can either be going into the wall or in my case it will be connected to a ladder. Here, I'm just showing how I extend the platform by using another tile. Measuring up how much I need and then I cut at both ends with a cutter. Then I proceed with a hobby knife and cut between these two ends and as you can see you can just snap it off. Of course this will leave some work for your trusty mold line remover to clean up. This extra tile part here extends into the column section so it needs to be trimmed down. The column is at a 45 degree angle so you need to do the same when you make your cut. Also the ladder needs some minor adjustments here to fit onto the ramp. Cutting off a small part to make it fit. And as usual, the mold line remover tool comes back to the rescue. And the final part is assembling the ladder with a ramp, adjusting as needed. You can see that I'm using a fair amount of plastic glue. With terrain I do this, to make it sturdy and able to withstand hits from flailing hands and arms during gameplay. I actually have one friend who actually goes home after each game bleeding from some kind of body part, due to terrain impact. I thank him for his contribution in my building process. Now, this step should be a part of the main theme step, but my brain was not focused during the recording of this video and I'm not used to multitasking. Anyhow, cutting out a hole in a tile is quite hard the first time. What I do is, I use a normal hobby knife, and in this case it's a Games Workshop one, just to show you that that blade works perfectly fine. I do several cuts and always, when working with a knife, I always cut away from my body. The cuts that I do here is between two individual tiles. I do place the knife in a groove, so to speak, so it's easy to follow and easy to cut. It will take several cuts, but eventually you will feel that you're cutting through. Turn it upside down and cut the support rings where you have made your cuts. Now it's just a matter of pushing out the individual tile. With the pitfall in place, I reassemble all the pieces to check so everything fits, so nothing is distorted after I've made this huge pitfall into the tile. Also here you can see that I placed a 2D tile underneath to show you my future plans on how to paint the bottom of the pit. I'll be placing this tile as like all my other tiles on a 2 inch thick XPS foam. So there will actually be a hole followed with the painted pitfall. Moving on to the final step and that's what I call the final details step. Here I start off by adding the most important details and move on. In this case it's the bridge over the pitfall. Sorry for this part being out of focus. It's two ladders from the Sector Mechanicers added together and the chains are from the crane kit. The skull will be added at the split of the chains. And there you have the finished drawbridge. Simple, but it's easy to build. Now moving on to the other final details and these might be anything that you want to add. Enhancing the main theme or just random junk. I always add railings, barricades, crates and barrels at this stage. Enhancing details will be shown later on, and it's a sentry turret for the main gate. The Somatars platform and stairs kit comes with 12 railings, and this can to some extent be limiting your build in many cases. Well, it sure does for me. But this is a war zone pretty much, and breaking up the railings with barricades, crates, is a workaround. Also, it adds to the fact that this is not an intact area. By doing these transitions from railings to barricades or crates, it is easy to create a section with no railing, which adds to the hazards of fighting on a higher level, which means falling down. Another trick that I use, not shown here, is to cut the railing into two, cutting it so it looks broken, 
thus getting two pieces that can be placed at different locations. This also transitions them into areas with no railings. Final thing I will add here, actually a preparation for a painting process, is adding structure paint. This I place around all the objects touching the floor tile or platforms. There's a reason behind this and I will show that in a future painting video once I'm done with this one. And there we have it, the cross tile, doubling as a main gate for my future stronghold. Now the stronghold will be a 7 tile project, with each tile being able to act as a standalone piece interacting with other tiles. Future video will come showing on how all these tiles come together once I'm done. Well that's it for this time, I do hope you got something useful out of this video. And as usual, if you do like my content, please consider uh, becoming a patron, it really helps me out creating video content. And as a patron, you will be helping me decide what I will do next for my future videos. Also, I'm looking into uh, what kind of merchandise I can have and be available for my patrons. But more on that for the next year. Until next time, Happy New Year and I'll see you in the next one.